Так. Okay, so this uh, meeting is titled Relax into Health, Wealth, and Happiness. So that is uh, what is possible. That's really what's possible. That's also truth in advertising. So I, I want to be clear about that, that that's honestly what is available, that Notice there's a big difference between uh, work really hard for health, wealth, and happiness and relax into health, wealth, and happiness. You can just notice the difference in how you receive those two. So I'll say them again and just notice how you receive them. So just notice the felt sense of it as you receive the invitation. So the first one is work really hard for health, wealth, and happiness. So just notice how that feels when you receive that, when you consider that, contemplate that, imagine that possibility, work really hard for health, wealth, and happiness. And then I want you to now notice what it feels like to receive this invitation, relax into health, wealth, and happiness. So I hope that you can notice there's a difference in the way that you experience those two. Well, it turns out that um, actually the way that we, so a lot of time we can, in, in certain circles, like maybe I've done it, um, we can kind of poo-poo the story, the narrative. Like we say, well, that's, um, we kind of associate that with something negative, you know, like that's the problem is the narrative. We got to just get rid of the narrative, stop believing that. But I would say that that's a, um, not a, an accurate or, or entirely helpful way to understand or to relate to story. Uh, even though it may have some benefit in a limited context as a particular uh, pointer or teaching aid, but at a, at a more mature level, what we want to start to understand is that our story is um, not, a, not a problem, it's not the enemy, it's not to be uh, gotten rid of, it's, it is uh, intimately one with the totality of what we are. It is the dynamic aspect of what we are. So we could say that we have, we are uh, the, the greatest truth, let's say the supreme reality is non-dual. This is true. Um, but as soon as we start to want to understand that, all of a sudden we are relating to that as something and we have to relate to it thereby um, in some kind of polarity. So we manufacture ideas of dual and non-dual or formless and form. And in, it's only in our minds that we separate them. You have to see. It's just an idea that they're separate. In reality, we can see that the actual present truth as it is happening right now is this, and this is complete. It's not separate. There's nothing separate here. That's the immediate reality. That's this uh, most intimate reality. You don't have to go searching for it. In fact, if you're searching for it, you overlook it. But if you stop searching for a moment, here it is, clear, clear as day. Then, of course, we go back into our usual habit. And uh, that habit is to have a relationship, to ex try to have an experience, to try to understand. And so we're right back into this position where I'm observing, I'm the witness, I'm something separate 
actually from the experience. So now we're manufacturing these positions that there's the formless and there's the form. And the form is what we're, we're associating here with the story, the narrative, which is what we then will downplay. Or we could say it's the ego, it's the personality, it's the world illusion, whatever, however we understand it. But you notice that in certain ways, we make that the new problem. You know, we have, we think, oh, now I understand. Finally, I, I understand. I, now I know who I am and what, what my relationship is to everything. And I understand that, that that's delusion. That's the problem. And there's a certain level of truth to that, right? Because we were, when we're completely enmeshed in that, when we're completely lost in that, when we don't realize that there is, that we have a, um, what we could say is a non uh, moving fixed uh, nature, an absolute nature. When we come to this realization, then of course we start to see that as well, that's inferior because that's dependent. So then, but we make the mistake when we try to cut that off. So my invitation here, the, or I shouldn't say my invitation, that's not an accurate way of putting it. The invitation that I am here as a representative of, you know, I'm an ambassador of the invitation. It's ultimately, it's the invitation from yourself and I'm just the mouthpiece for it. And um, so this invitation is an invitation to uh, true wholeness, to true, uh, uh, to, to, a, to a supreme, uh, realization of the true non-dual reality, not the relatively non-dual, which is where we get hung up in the mind. So here we're actually wanting to include everything. Nothing is excluded. That's the that's that's very essential here. Is that the invitation that's being extended right now? Uh, and remember, this is always, it's an interactive participatory process. So this is an active inquiry that we're engaged in. And you can um, reap the benefits of that largely to the extent that you are willing to actively engage in the process, which I attempt to make uh, as effortless as possible, because I'm just sort of pointing out things, just pointing them out and all you have to do is look. So you notice, before you think about anything, right now, in this very instant, before you decide that you have a past and you know something about yourself and what all this is and your relationship to it, just for that for a split second, notice that you are, and that this isness, this being, this uh, awareness has no form. It's not an object. And you can notice the, that this, you start to observe. So, oh, I wanna, I wanna say something here. So I've been, um, over the last months, I've been uh, formulating and sharing this, uh, what I've been calling the unconditional peace inquiry. Um, and I had previously suggested there are two steps. Now, of course, this is all, you know, it's sort of fabricated. So there are no steps, but it, it's a, but to, uh, at the same time, it's a process. It's an instruct, it's an instruction step by step. So um, take it lightly, but I'll, I'll now say that there, uh, gotten a little bit more clarity around it. I'd say it's more helpful to view it as three steps because otherwise if we uh, overlook this step, this other step that I had been sort of omitting, um, it can still be successful, but we're not as likely to be as successful. So let me give you those steps. So first we've noted, so. But the, the backdrop for this is to say that we're the invitation and the approach here and what this unconditional peace inquiry is, is uh, pointing to 
is inclusive. It's inclusive. This is a, a, a very essential principle of what this uh, message is all about. So there are many ways that you can approach your uh, whatever you want to call it, awakening, evolution. Uh, and all of them have some positive things to be said about them. So, um, but for here, it's very, it will be very helpful to you if, if you have other ideas from somewhere else, right? Because we've all, we have ideas from somewhere else. We have ideas that we learned from our parents and ideas that we learned from our teachers and ideas that we learned from books and ideas that we learned in uh, maybe religious or spiritual institutions and on and on. We have all of these ideas about what it means to be successful, who I am, what I need to do, what I should do and what I shouldn't do and what it all means and what my goals are and how to achieve those goals. We have all of these ideas, mundane and spiritual and everywhere else in between. And that's all fine and good as far as it goes. I'm not asking here, this, that's why I say this is inclusive, it's not exclusive. I'm not saying you must you know, sign a contract and you're now locked into this and you have to not uh, do anything else. But what I am saying is that in order to really receive the true benefit, the maximum value of what's offered here, it will be very helpful to you if you're willing for the purposes of our investigation here to temporarily set aside everything else that you think you know and everything else that you're conditioned to assume. And now that's a tall order, I understand, but I am emphasizing that because it's true. It will be very helpful. So just start to look with that in mind, in a sense, so that you're now observing your experience, as I've been inviting you to do, of course, but now you're in your observing your experience and you're noticing all, not all, more of the filters, more of the conditioning, more of the assumptions, more of what puts the blinders on so that you only see this limited reality and you believe that that's all there is. Okay, so you just start to see that you're doing that. You just start to see that here's an assumption that I already know what this means or that I've already done this or I read that it's the same as what I read in that book or whatever else. You just start to notice those, those beliefs, that conditioning operating, and you just let it come and go, okay? So now back to the step-by-step -step detailed uh, look at this technique. Okay, so step one, and this is essential because, and I've already been inviting you to it, okay? But see what I'm pointing to here, that the step one is to recognize that you are formless awareness or that that is true. You don't have to, at this stage, you don't have to try and do anything with that. In fact, I would say, don't try to do anything with that. Don't try to make that your new belief. Don't insist that you have to have a particular feeling of it. Don't have any conditions for it whatsoever. Just simply recognize that you are aware or simply recognize that you exist and just recognize that this is instantaneously always available. It's always true. You can forget about it. Look over there, you know, look around the room, think about what you're going to do tomorrow. What did you have for breakfast today? What happened yesterday? Who are you, who are you on good terms with? Who are you not on good terms with? You know, just think about these things for a second. Now, Again, just check it out. Notice that you are. Notice that you're aware. You see, it's always here. Always. Whether you're thinking good thoughts or bad thoughts or no thoughts or lots of thoughts, whether you're feeling uptight or you're feeling relaxed, whatever the circumstances may be, every time you check it out, just like that, you notice I am. And you don't have to do anything for it, right? 
you can't do anything for it because it's here prior to anything you could do. By the time you formulated something that you're going to do, it's already here. It's a waste of your time to try and formulate something that you're going to do in order to get this because this is already here prior to. So hopefully you start to see that. Now, of course, the doubt is still there. Please understand, doubts are fine. Remember, this is inclusive, so we're not saying anything has to be excluded. We're keeping it super simple. You don't have to agree in your mind. You don't have to have the belief. You don't have to, nothing. You don't have to have had some fantastic, explosive experience. You don't have to like it. None of that is required. All that's required is just like that. You notice right now, I am. Now, the mind is going to say, what is that I am? What is he talking about? What am I, where do I find that? Ah, but just notice, as that's going on, you are. You see, it's that simple. You can't get out of it. You are. Okay, so that's step one. Just noticing that you are. Now, here's the, the at first, that doesn't seem like much. You know, at first, it's so easy to dismiss it and say, I'm not even sure anything happened. I don't know. I don't feel better. I guess it's not working. That's all very normal. But notice that as you continue to just check it out, see, notice that each time you check it out, you get a little bit more familiar. So just notice again that you are, just that you are. You, you're here, you're aware. And notice this being or the uh, awareness it doesn't depend on anything you see. So it doesn't depend on like you're aware and you are whether what you're aware of is that you, you like this or you don't like it, right? I mean, most of the time we're not accustomed to this. You have to understand most of the time what we're, what we're accustomed to is constantly seeking and managing. So for an instant, just to, you kind of have to let all that go and just notice the primal reality which is i am and so that habit keeps reasserting itself it's like oh yeah but what do i do with this what is it i don't know i don't know if it's real because i can't seem to do anything with it and how, how is it going to help me it's not all that important that's the activity that we're conditioned to but you just notice fine remember it's inclusive here we all that's fine we're not nobody said you can't have thought nobody said i mean somebody else somewhere else but here remember you said all that aside I'm telling you for our purposes here, this may not be true somewhere else, right? If you go to some mindfulness retreat or you're doing some, uh, you know, mantra or you're doing whatever you're doing, this, what I'm saying right now might not be true there, but here what's true is that everything's included. So you don't need to stop anything. You don't need to get rid of anything. All we're wanting to do is actually start to notice. And this is just step one is that, prior to all of that and without me having to do anything to earn it or create it there is already fundamentally a constant which is being or awareness that this is always here now the power i mean there's enormous power but one way to start to see this that it will be very helpful that will start to enliven that power in your experience is you just keep checking it out and you notice that in the instant in which you are, let's say, aware of yourself as awareness. Now, it's only just like that because our habit is to go right back to the mind. So that's okay. But I'm saying just in the instant, the one split second in which you are aware of yourself as awareness or you're aware of yourself as being, you're aware in this way for this one split second, just notice that yourself in this one instant, prior to the next moment, but in this one instant, notice there's no form. There's no shape. There's no size. There's no boundary. There's no limitation. There's no opposite. There is no other. Just in this one split second. Of course, the next second, 
all of those things seem to be there. Fine. Remember, we're not saying that that's not allowed. That's perfectly allowed. But we're just wanting to see over and over and over so that we get more familiar with it. We just start to notice, okay, I am. And then all this other stuff is happening, fine. But when I check it out again, I am. And you just start to notice that everything else is changing. The feelings are changing. The thoughts are changing. The body is changing. The relationships are changing. Finances are changing. The world is changing. Culture is changing. The language is changing. Everything is changing. But the one constant is this, which is always here prior to all of that, which is this formless awareness. So we're wanting to start to see that. And now notice that what's revealed without you having to believe this, but it's just revealed when you just start to look in this way, you start to realize that I am regardless of what's changing. Right. So, but now notice there's a contrast because there's this realization of this formless awareness that is eternal, that is constant, that is not dependent upon what's changing. It's always here. You're all you always are, and you're always aware. Now, your I remember <laughs> your ideas of what you are and your ideas of what awareness is. Those are not constant. Right. Those come and go. And that's why I'm saying that here we the part of the invitation and so that you can get the most out of it is just start to see that that conditioning is there. Those assumptions are there about who I am, what it means to be aware. So that every time we hear the words being and awareness, which are just pointers, but what we instead are, are hearing is our existing conditioning, right? You have no idea, you can't have any idea, because I can't have any idea either, what is actually being pointed to by the words being an awareness. That's not available to us because, that, because the reality, the present living reality of what those are pointing to is not a thing. It's not of the past. It can't be captured in the mind. It cannot be known in that way, but it can be known directly. And that's what this step one is about we just the more we repeat it the more we see this clearly that i am and everything that i think i am is seen in the light of true presence of true being and so it's revealed that oh that what i thought i am that comes and goes See, I think I'm this body, the body comes and goes. I think I'm the emotion, the emotion comes and goes. I think I'm the thought, the thought comes and goes. I think I'm the story, the story comes and goes. Okay, so this brings us back to the story. Remember, I said, so step one is to recognize that I am formless awareness. I am eternal. I am independent. Meaning I don't depend upon the story. The story is the change, it's the dy dynamism. I don't depend upon that. Now, this sounds very suspicious, doesn't it? It sounds like exactly like what I was saying is a pitfall, is that then we start to say, oh, I am formless awareness and I am not that. I'm not the story. Okay, but notice when we do that, what's your experience of that? Just start to notice that. As soon as you have this realization, oh, I am formless awareness. I am independent. I don't, that can't harm me. I am free. Notice you start to pull back, don't you? Like, now there's a new wall. Over here is formless awareness. Over there is all the rest of it, the world, all the phenomena, all the experience, all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the memories, all the ego, the personality, and so forth and so on. It's over there. It's all a lie. It's all delusion. It's all pain. Only over here is it say formless awareness. <sighs> Well, you know what happens here. Some of you have experienced it. Some of you have seen others do it. And for the rest of you, you can hopefully just understand that it happens, imagine it, and see that it's very painful ultimately. But you know, the tendency is then you have this experience. People will often say, oh, it was a spiritual experience. It makes it sound very good. But then they want to repeat that. Now that that experience was, you know, kind of like this experience of 
not being all those things and realizing oneself is uh, transcendent in some way. Okay. But now understand I'm saying that's essential. That's step one, but it's only step one. And if we stay there, we artificially create a, uh, another false boundary that we have to defend. I'm over here, formless awareness, that over there is the threat. I have to defend, I have to keep, form I have to keep formless awareness safe. So step two is, now this is to realize that I, it is true that I am formless awareness, but formless awareness is not separate from the dynamic aspect of the self. Because you just notice without making any effort. Now this, this takes maybe a little bit of practice sometimes to get clear on, but it's worth getting clear on. But if you just start to observe, okay? So first you realize I am formless awareness. This has to be directly experienced. Now, you just start to rest here for a moment. See if that's possible. Can you just rest here so you don't make any effort? Notice it's different than trying to stay here. I'm not saying you try to stay here. I'm saying rest here, just rest. So will things come? Yes. Will there be fluctuations? Yes. Will there be things that you're in the habit of giving attention to? Yes. Everything's welcome, everything's allowed. Just rest. So you just start to notice there's that thing that normally you just give your attention to. Normally you just do that thing. Normally you just, but you're aware of it at a subtler level. So just feel that, just notice that. And what, as you do so, you might start to notice there's actually kind of, um, it's kind of a pleasant experience. Okay, so it's, uh, so you, now notice that, and this is a little bit subtle, but it's, but this is the second step that I'm, I'm now in inserting. It's a finer detailed point, but I have come to realize now that it's very helpful. Um, so you just are resting, just resting here. Just, you just, that doesn't mean that you have to protect anything. It's quite the opposite. You're resting. So, you, but notice that there is naturally movement that occurs. You don't have to try. Your own, your attention is just with resting, but as you're resting, notice that there's certain movement that occurs. There's just this movement, dynamism, experience that's happening. Now, normally when, when we haven't, settle down the nervous system enough, then what happens, and so we're still strongly identified with the personality and having to defend everything, then what's happening is these impulses, these movements are there, but we're, our attention is at a very superficial level. So it's all kind of bubbled up and it's very uh, highly differentiated. And we get, there are so many assumptions that if come before that now we're way out here in some weird territory and we don't even realize it. So we start to experience life as like, we're unstable, we're out of balance, we're always catching up, we're always having to make effort to stay stable. You know, we're just, because we're way out here, we don't realize it, but we, this is the effect of the limitation, the blinders, which put us way out here and we say, this is just how life is and I've got to work with it. And it's so hard and it's so miserable and I see no way out of it. It's just how it has to be. But we don't realize it's the, these blinders. So step one is to come back here and realize I am formless awareness. There's no limitation. Step two is to just rest here for a moment and just observe and notice that there is movement that naturally arises and that I am not separate from that. Here's where we go. We're going, you know, the Vedantists can't handle this. Sorry. But, you know, because their philosophy 
stops with formless awareness. It's, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's, there's an e another way to see it that's complementary, that is more helpful for us. Because we're not monks. We're not renunciates. We're not living isolated in, the, in some cave in meditation 24 seven. Okay, so that's a different way. We are here engaged in the world. We have, there, there, there is a particular type of dynamic expression that we are here for. I'm, it's not like I don't have some great power of clairvoyance necessarily. I'm just observing what, what is, and I'm just describing it to you. I mean, cl clearly, because all of you have technology enough to be able to participate, right? So I know that you're not a renunciate. Renunciates don't have Wi-Fi and smartphones and stuff. So... We want to know, okay, so of course, all of us, you know, renunciate or, or, or householder, that's where at the level of story, right? So, but formless awareness, where is there more than one? You have to look, look right now, but you just look just like that and notice I am, is, is, is there someone who is, or is it just, being you see we say i am because that's the language but notice is there someone who is is that the nature of the experience when you just for a second just notice that you are is there someone who is in if i mean that's a possibility but that's a different thing than what i'm pointing to so we're just getting clear here what i'm pointing to because it's possible yes you can say i am there's someone who is, but the one who is, see, there's being, which is, I am, is I, like the witness. There's someone here who's witness to being. But prior to that, see, that's a valid perspective. It's just that it's, it's more limited, already more differentiated than what is prior to that, which we can all, we all have access to. You just notice, see, even in order to say it's implicit before I am, right? What is it that can say I? You see, before I am, before the witness, who can say I? Who can do that? Being. Being, remember, it's just a word. But in other words, you, but not you as some one who is, rather isness, being. And notice it's directly accessible to you. I'm, I'm not pointing out something that's theoretical. I'm saying notice that this is true. You don't have to create it. This, this precedes creation. It's a very important point. Because normally we're trying to create it, and that's the wrong direction for this. For this step one, we have to look in prior to creation, who's there? I am. Being. And you notice there's not, it's not, when I say I am in this case, I'm not saying I am. I'm not saying I, ha I have some unique, distinct, individual isness. No, I'm saying I am being. One. There is only this. There's no boundary, no limitation, no definition. There's not a you who is and a me who is, there is being. This is what we're wanting to recognize in step one. Then we continue to rest here, noticing that even though there is only oneness, this is the most intimate, immediate realization of oneness being, not I am, but being, oneness. This is immediately 
recognized. And remember, the doubts and the thoughts are all welcome. So we're not saying they don't come. They do. But prior to those, there's a glimpse just for a split second of being. We, as we continue to allow ourselves to rest here, we notice, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to see it for yourself, you notice that there's still activity, there's still movement. Now, normally, our habit is to interpret that activity, as I say, through, this, through the filter of the conditioning. So then we're way out here already. We're way out on a limb, so we're not centered. We're not stable. We're not balanced. We're all the way out here. So we're already having to make a lot of effort just to maintain this weird position. And that's why, you know, anything that's too different from that, we're going to fight. Because <laughs> we're really uncomfortable being out here. It's really hard to make all this effort all the time to justify this position, this bizarro position as the totality of what is. So we come back, step one, recognize I am, that it's formless, it's boundless. Step two is just rest here for as best you can and notice there's still activity. Now, this activity is not separate from being. You have to see this. It's only a mental distinction, but in reality, in direct perception, you can you find any boundary between being formless and the dynamism, the activity, the movement that is happening un, uh, uncaused. At least as far as you know, it's uncaused. Maybe in some, you know, maybe theoretically it's caused, but as far as you have access to right now, it's just happening spontaneously. But can you find a boundary between you being and the activity, the dynamism, the movement? So you're aware there's dynamism, like you're hearing the sound of my voice, that's dynamism, that's movement. You're, if you're, you know, have any kind of visual sense happening, then you're aware of that dynamism. There's sensation happening that you associate with your body. That's happening. So all this stuff is happening. And if, if you just rest here and just observe it, you'll see, oh yeah, it's, it doesn't, I don't seem to be able to discern the cause. It's just happening spontaneously. And where is the separation between that and me? There's none. I am being, I am formless awareness, and yet here is this differentiated appearance of form occurring uncaused, spontaneously. And I am one with it, as far as I can tell. Can't find any boundary. Hopefully this is clear, because this is really, and uh, 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 this is the missing step that now is being revealed. So we recognize that I, I am being formless awareness. And there is this spontaneous dynamic expression occurring. And I am that too. I am not separate from that. I am not th that and not this. And I am not this and not that. I am including that, okay? Now, notice, this is still step two, that you have, uh, a, 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 as far as you can tell, an innate preference. I'm not talking about a conditioned preference. We have a lot of conditioned preferences. But I'm saying just at this very subtle level, you can start to notice that you, there, you, this expression, this dynamism, certain things, you, we're just observing, hopefully at a subtle level, you just start to feel the impulses. You just start to notice there's this activity, there's kind of a movement, there's, your attention tends to go that way. It starts to take on a particular form. You start to have certain kinds of ideas, certain kinds of uh, sensations, certain, it's different than something else. You start to recognize that this is this and not that. 
and you have preference because as it's arising, you're starting to feel a yes, I will, yes, this, like this, or you're starting to feel, a, oh, no, not this, right? So there's a preference. Now, in some, I, you know, some, in some approaches, which this is not, but I'm, I want to be clear about this. This is one of those things where what applies somewhere else doesn't necessarily apply here and what applies here doesn't necessarily apply somewhere else. So don't just be willing to set aside everything that you think you know and just be present to what's um, offered here. You might start to notice that um, there's some ideas in some uh among some, you know, in some philosophies or, or uh, techniques or teachings or whatever, that um, we should have no attachment, no preference. And there's a certain way in which that's uh, a useful pointer, even in this, with this invitation, but we want to be clearer about it so that we don't over, uh, overly generalize that because it's not true when, if we overgeneralize it. So um, when we realize that we have an attachment uh, or a preference that is not actually true, then it, we will also realize that holding on to it is painful. And so our, we are then, if we allow the the inquiry that's being offered here, that's what is, is, is on offer here, is this inquiry, this living inquiry. If we start to really accept that inquiry and begin to participate with that inquiry, then what is going to happen is that we can realize, oh, I don't need that attachment. I can let that go. But notice that, that if we overgeneralize that, idea, then what we start to believe is that I should not have any preference and everything is all the same. And so then what is the point of view? There, you, you have to understand, if you take that all the way, if you follow that all the way, that logic, which is the basis of how we're conducting ourselves, the basis of how we're understanding ourselves, if you follow that all the way through, all, the ultimate result of that is that there is no point of me and I, I will be best off when I'm gone. So then we start to want to just get rid of ourselves. You see, that's kind of where that leads is I'm all bad. Everything about me is wrong. Uh, it's all problematic. It's all just this, this annoying, troublesome personality ego structure that's all bad and I just need to get rid of it and why why oh why am I suffering like this whatever did I do and I'm proposing that that's not I don't believe the most useful way to look at it and so we want to be here now what we're really starting to do is become aware of our stories and how our stories can be useful or not useful our stories can be in alignment with our purpose or they can be in opposition to our purpose. And of course, um, if our stories are in opposition to our purpose, then we're going to generally feel bad, right? Because if, you're, like, if your purpose is to be you, which obviously it is, okay, then um, if assuming that that's your purpose, if every time that you are you, which is all the time, you are believing this story, which is, I'm bad. Well, there's a recipe for suffering, isn't it? I mean, you're like, so the, per the fundamental purpose of my life is to be myself, which I didn't create. I mean, that, that was, that's given. That's the spontaneous happening that's always going on. Like that, I am... The recipient of that, I am not. I'm. I'm. I'm not responsible for creating that in that sense. Like I am simply the recipient of that. 
But if, if every time that's going on, which is all the time, I'm more focused instead, instead, instead of seeing the blessed truth of that, you know, that this is a divine expression of divine purpose, perfectly manifesting, instead of being in, in alignment with that story, which would be very useful, instead, I'm very committed to this story over here, which says I'm bad. Well, this is what I'm saying is that this notion that um, that desire is problematic, that desire is the enemy, that any kind of unique expression is is uh, uh, is bad. All that does is feed into me being fixated on this unhelpful story, and then the various methods that one will adopt in order to hold on to that story and suffer and struggle through this life are pretty remarkable. Uh, but all every one of them are miserable. So instead, what I'm proposing is that we start to just notice that I, I am, okay, formless awareness. I can't be harmed by desire. How could I be harmed by desire? In this moment right now, you recognize that you are formless awareness. What on earth is going to harm you? You are independent. So then we just start to, from this perspective, I guess you could say, we start to peer out into reality and start to notice Oh, and stuff is happening, right? And this stuff that's happening, I'm in the habit of calling me. I realize that I am formless awareness, but I'm in the habit of calling this stuff happening me. Well, now I'm just wanting to start to expand and broaden my sense of myself. So am I merely formless awareness, merely formless awareness? Or, I mean, cl clearly I wasn't happy being merely the personality because that's very fragile and that's very limited and painful and dysfunctional so if i so what a blessing to realize i am i i'm not bound by that oh what a relief but then i want to see okay but the 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 key that unlocked that freedom was the realization that I am formless awareness. I am transcendent of that. But don't, then I'm proposing, don't make the mistake of artificially walling yourself off and saying, I am not that. Just because you are formless awareness, it does not follow that you are not that. It, that would only follow if that is also not formless awareness. But see, we haven't yet determined or been able to prove that that's not formless awareness. We just have an idea that that's not formless awareness because we say this is formless awareness, that's not formless awareness. But the invitation here is, wait a second, just see the pain of holding on to that position. It's expansive relative to that old story, but it's also limited because I'm saying I am formless awareness, but I'm not form. So anytime form is appearing, which is a lot of the time, I'm, I, I'm not okay. I, I'm, I'm under attack. I'm threatened by delusion. So instead, we, step two is we just pause, rest, just notice the discomfort, the churning, the, all of this stuff. And no, this is where we start wanting to get clear on seeing there is natural preference. It's not bad. We just want to start to notice it so that we can start to flow like a river. Imagine a river where every drop of water is saying, I want to go that way. And the other one's saying, I want to go that way. And the other one's saying, I want to go that way. And the other one's saying, I want to go that way. I mean, that's not a river anymore, is it? There's no river. That's just chaos. River requires coherence. You see, so we, we, every one of us wants coherence in our life. We want our life expression to be one of coherence because that is the experience of flow. In the absence of that, 
what we have is very varying degrees of chaos. But we're not here for that, you see. We're not here for chaos. We don't need that. We are formless awareness. Formless awareness has no need for chaos. Formless awareness and chaos are the same. Formless awareness is like not interested in chaos. It is itself, it's one. There's nothing that gives any sense of any other. So you cannot interest yourself in chaos. What you can interest yourself, and you can see naturally we are seeking form. And the form, you can't, you can't not seek form. You stare at the sky and you will see form. You will begin to see form. You can't not see form. It's not a possibility. So, but notice that some, there are some, the, you have preference. You prefer form, this form to that form. There, the, this form appears different than that form. You have preference. Now you can fight, right? You can say, well, but that's not spiritual. And I read that the Buddha said and uh, blah, 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 all these things to justify that you should just not have preferences and, well, you know, I'm just going to sit here and not have any preferences and not move and not have any desire because I'm at, well, secretly, because I'm just terrified. But I dress it up as something else. Or I can be willing to risk being alive. And I can say, I am, I am here for a purpose. And that purpose is not something I have to anticipate. I don't have to create. I don't have to do any of that. All I have to do is just open to it. And it is myself. It's how easy is that? But the difficulty is that now here's, okay, so, so to polish off step two, step two turns out to be very complex. But step two, you know, rest here and notice the impulses and at a subtle level start to just notice, even at this subtle level, there's some that I feel very attracted to and some that I'm not attracted to. Now, if I'm not attracted to it, Notice that usually my habit, this is very important, my habit is to fight against the ones that I'm not attracted to. And because my energy goes into fighting against the ones that, I'm, that I don't want, I don't actually, in truth, receive the ones that I'm attracted to because I'm always putting them off. It's not safe now. I'm not ready now. I got all this stuff that I got to work on, all these things I got to protect myself against, all these things I got to get rid of. Right? It's like, why health, wealth, and happiness? Well, why do you want health, wealth, and happiness? Because you perceive that you don't have them. I mean, there would be nothing at all attractive about a meeting called relaxing health, wealth, and happiness if you already perceived that you were completely healthy, wealthy, and happy. Right? You're attracted to it because you think that you lack those things. And that just shows that we're usually putting our effort into trying to get rid of what we don't want and we don't actually open to the reality of what it is that we do want so here we're wanting to see at a subtle level that i naturally have preferences and that's good that's who i am i am formless awareness yes and i am a unique expression of that i'm not here to be just part of some homogenous blob <laughs> i am here to be this to know that I am formless awareness and to express this unique desire. Notice it didn't say anything about I'm here to judge and condemn this unique desire, but no, that's what most of us are doing. So I, I won't go into too much more detail on that. I, I'm tempted to, but I won't because we got to wrap it up. I mean, gotten to step three. We want to see, I have these preferences. So now notice, this is so important that at this point, you're, there's energy. You notice that? You notice that if you're just, if you start to just rest here, even for a second, 
even for two seconds at a time, that there's, there's energy. Now this energy is, the more you rest here, the more that energy builds up. I suggest, very important point, don't try to do this for a long time because why? You're gonna build up a huge charge and then what? You know what's gonna happen then. You're gonna collapse it into the usual habit, the one that you don't like, the one where you're fighting against everything you don't like. Because as that charge is building up, simultaneous to that is the sense of the whole, the, the unhelpful narrative of there's a problem, I'm under attack, I can't hold this up for much longer, I'm not safe, I've got to do something. See, that's building up simultaneous. So as soon as that charge collapses, it's pow, right into that story. Now you got that story supercharged. So now your usual life, your usual habits, they're just on fire. That's not what you want. So much better is we just a little charge. This little charge is like a spark so that now that spark illuminates so we can see in the clarity of that light. Step three, okay? So step two is that we rest here, let a little bit of that charge build up. So we feel a little bit of that energy and we start to notice now that that energy, it wants to go this way or that way. This way I like, this way I don't like. And now step three is now imagine what you desire. See, with this, that you actually desire, not what you don't desire, what you actually desire, which is you can experience it directly. It feels good. You, you do this often and you'll start to see it's a very use. It's a very effective technique because you're learning how to cultivate this new story. It's a new pathway, this energy, neutral, formless, you know, but it, we want to go to a very subtle level. So we start to notice where it starts to differentiate. Because if, we, if, if we're after that, we, it's more work for us. We want to stay right here at the very subtlest level. So we start to notice, okay, here's where it goes this way or this way. And we have to notice that I like this way. I don't like this way, but my habit is to go this way. So if I indulge that habit, guess what? I'm going to go way out here, but I want to go that way. So now when I'm way out here and I want to go that way, how much more work do I have? A lot more work. And we'll fail every time. You see, that's what we do every time we fail. And then we say, ah, oh, it just doesn't work. Nothing works. More proof that life is just miserable. But here, I promise you, you keep exploring it. You'll see what I'm talking about. You just rest here. And you notice that charge building up. You notice now that you naturally desire one way. Because and it feels good. So one way to describe that is health, wealth, and happiness. So you just start to notice what is the positive, the positive, truthful desire for you that those words are pointing to. Not what you fear that, 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 that you lack, but just what is the yes there for you? Just start to notice that. Just like, what, what would it be for you to be truly healthy, wealthy, and happy. Now you imagine that. This is step three. You imagine that you are truly healthy, wealthy, and happy. That this true abundance of health, wealth, and happiness that is your true nature expressed. It's your true desire. It's who you are expressed. It's why you're here. You start to imagine that is expressing as you, as your mind, as your body as your emotions, as your feelings, as your experiences, as your relationships. You start to notice that. You're imagining that. And remember, we've built up that charge so that light is shining. Now, what are we going to see here? Very important. You're going to see all the ways you block yourself. All the ways that you shut that down. All the beliefs that have you going that way instead of this way. You want this, this is true, but you start to see, and you'll see it, they'll show up. It's like, yeah, but that, I, that couldn't really be. Oh, that'd be nice, but that's fantasy. Oh, that would be too hard, I couldn't do that. Oh, that's too scary, I'd have to give up. I couldn't give that up. 
oh, you know, that could be for other people, but not for me. It's too late for me, too screwed up. Too... That's a good one. Love that one. So effective. Gets us every time, doesn't it? Oh, you know, too much water under the bridge. You know, if I was, if only I knew this when I was younger, then I'd have a chance, but too late for me. And you see all the excuses. And then you just have to keep repeating. Okay. So do it at least. We're running a little over, but let's take the time. I want to run us, let's run it three times. Three. Let's run it three times. Okay. Because if we do it three times, uh, a couple of things. One is I want you to get a sense for the pacing, the timing of it, so that you can get the best uh, effect. Okay. Because if you draw it out too much, you will not get as good of an effect. You won't get as good of a result. Okay. So one thing is to give you a sense of the timing. Um, another is so that you can just practice it, get the experience. And, um, and also because I want us to do it three times in a row, because when we repeat it three times, um, it kind of any amount is good, but if you do minimum of three times, and that three, three is good, it's not too much, not too little, it's the sweet spot, because it's going to reinforce that new learning, okay, but it's not going to completely exhaust you. So it's just, we, we do it very gently. It's very important. You're super gentle. Don't be so hard on yourself. Just notice how you have a tendency to be very hard on yourself. Very strict. Okay. Very, uh, many things you'll see about the violence that we enact. Okay. So step one, all together, just for an instant, just notice I am. You don't have to try hard. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to have thoughts that are in agreement with it. Just simply notice that you are. It's that simple. Then step two, just for a moment, don't make any effort. Just continue to rest. And it's okay if you're not quite sure what that means. You just do your best. You just notice what effort is being made that's unnecessary and just see that you can let that go a little bit. Don't strive for perfection. And then from here, just start to notice that there is naturally within you a desire for what you perceive to be good. It doesn't have to be the same as any, what anybody else thinks is good. It might be that you have judgments that what is good and true for you is not okay for some reason. So there may be many layers, but if you just bring it back to something so innocent, like just be for a moment, so innocent, like a newborn baby, that there's no learned conditioning. Nobody yet told you that you couldn't or that that's not okay. So that there's just this natural spontaneous innocence that you start to notice where it's just, you just are naturally attracted like a, like a flower to the sun that you just say, yes, that's for me. That is wonderful. I feel nourished and good and, and inspired. You just notice that and notice that that is a feeling that you could say is the feeling of the embodiment of health, wealth, and happiness. That is the embodiment of unconditional peace. It's just, yes, I am, and I am loved, and I am good, and I'm happy. And just notice that for a moment. You don't have to think that it's true or anything. You just notice that and just notice the feeling, even if it's just very small. And then step three, I want you to imagine now that that core light, that core truth, that core yes, that core happiness is expressing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your relationships, in your finances, everywhere in your life. And just notice whatever you notice. There'll be judgments. There'll be all kinds of things. And just notice them. Don't take any of them. Don't grasp any of them. Just notice and notice those are the ways in which you habitually prevent yourself from having that fullness of that expression of the truth of who you are, of the joy of who you are, of the freedom of who you are. So that's one round. Let's do it two more times. So step one is just notice that just for an instant, I am formless awareness. I am here. I don't have to do anything for it. It doesn't 
require any particular experience, any particular feeling, all those things come and go and I am. Just notice that, just for a, a split second. And then step two, you just rest. Don't make any effort. Don't try and get rid of anything or to get anything. Just be very restful and start to just notice that in a very innocent way, just like a newborn child, there is just this innocent, spontaneous desire. It's, and it feels good. The desire is the desire to be yourself. The desire to express yourself authentically. The desire manifests as what you are attracted to, what you like, what you're here for. And you just start to feel that there's a feeling, even if you just catch a glimpse of it, it's a feeling that you call the feeling of health, wealth, happiness. And it's all unconditional, unconditional peace, unconditional happiness. And you just notice that don't force, just be gentle, be patient. And you just notice whatever glimmer of that you can. And then you just let that be enlivened within your awareness as you imagine for a moment, and this is step three, that that unconditional peace, that unconditional freedom, that unconditional happiness, that unconditional light is expressing in your body, your mind, your emotions, your relationships, your community, every aspect of your life. And don't have any worries here. Whatever is seen is absolutely perfect and good. So it may be, you may have judgment that it's good or that it's bad or that nothing's happening or everything's happening and it's all fine. You're just seeing whatever the conditioning is that is up to now has been limiting your experience of the fullness of that expression of the truth of who you are. That's it. So it's a blessing you're seeing it. Whether you register it consciously or not, it doesn't matter. It's a blessing. And let's do it one more time. So step one, just for a split second notice, you can just drop it all, make no effort, and you are. You don't have to do anything to be, you simply are. And then step two, you can just continue to rest as yourself, just being. And in that, you notice this movement, the spontaneous arising of experience and perception. And you just notice that you naturally have preference. There's a natural attraction to particular qualities of experience. And just feel those, open to them, allow yourself that. Just give yourself that gift as you would give a newborn baby. You know, you would care for the baby, you would soothe the baby, you would nourish the baby, you would take such good care of the baby. You do the same for yourself just for a moment. Allow that innocence, allow that natural spontaneous arising of truth, of, of expression, and the desire. And, you, and it feels good. So you notice that good feeling. Just notice that there's a good feeling available, even if there are other feelings. This good feeling is available and you can choose it. You can just allow yourself gently to remain open to that. And then step three is you now imagine that good feeling, that truth expressing in all areas of your life, in your emotions, in your relationships, in your uh, finances, in your career, in your community, in all areas, any area of your life that you have any uh, sense of limitation or fear or apprehension, you just imagine that expressing there and whatever you discover in, as you imagine that is good. So don't, don't think that it has to be what you would think of as good. Instead, you want to expand your understanding of good by being open to whatever is revealed here as good, even if you have a conditioned reaction to it, you just welcome it. And then just notice the something has changed. Just notice that and notice that that's a miracle. 
we be we often grow so cynical and we think you know it's all just so hardened and miserable and it's always going to be like this but notice actually right now something has changed something has actually changed your awareness of yourself has changed and this is real this is more real than anything else this is the very foundation of your experience there is nothing that occurs to you or in your experience that is not shaped by your self-awareness your realization of who you are your story really just we all have a story and that story is either helpful or unhelpful and when it's unhelpful it hurts and through this process the story is not just at a mental level the story is at all levels it's at the level of the uh, feeling it's at the level of emotion it's at the level of energy it's at the level of the um, way we hold ourselves physically in the body it's at the level of our relationships it's at all levels so we we get the best uh transformative power when we address it at as many levels as possible which is what this inquiry does so it's very powerful and you notice that it produces change your sense of who you are is different and your sense of what's possible for you is different and you want to acknowledge that and then you want to know that that's just the start that is real don't make the mistake of thinking oh well that is just some you know placebo effect and it will go and then you know because then you're just going back to your cynical story and latching on to that but stay with this for a moment and let it integrate let this newness enter at all levels and begin to take root so that because this is what you want you see we are li we are living our lives most of the time and through a story that is about what we don't want and we wonder why do we keep getting what we don't want and what i'm saying is here you have the the answer to that question is completely here this is for you you it's yeah. right here it's it's in you you've had you're having the experience so just recognize it recognize that what is being shown to you right now in your direct experience all you have to do is look and see the truth of it is that you are not limited by that story and that there are simply elements of that story that have outlived their usefulness and you can let them go and in letting them go what happens is twofold it's really remarkable and you notice how much we can kick and scream and resist this but you, but if you just start to see how powerful it is and what it's really doing you'll stop doing that you'll stop resisting because you'll see that it's on two levels it's it and it's these are the two levels that we care about one is at the level of form at the level of identity at the level of the ego at the level of the personality at the level of the expression the unique individual expression in this world that is coming that is being enlightened right it's being enlightened as we're we're letting go of the unnecessary burdens that artificially limit the full free expression of our purpose so naturally as that is lightened we experience buoyancy, we experience flow, we experience more ease and happiness. Second level is that it's revealing to us with ever greater clarity the, 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 the deeper truth of the realization that I am formless awareness. So they, because they go hand in hand, the more, this is, a, I, I'm going long, I know, but I just want to finish with this one more thing that the many of the traditional some, okay, some of, I don't know about many, but some, at least some of the traditional paths um, 
to greater self uh, awareness, the self discovery, self realization, tend to unnecessarily reinforce some very difficult and unnecessarily difficult parts of the story. Uh, for example, this notion, which is turns out is fundamentally baseless, um, that I must suffer in order to be happy. And just look and see how that's operating in your life. It's there, I promise you. Because it's that is so in our cultures. You must suffer to be happy. And so as long as you see that that's, you know, like a lot of the traditional views are, you know, you got to get through this life. You'll get to the afterlife if you've been good then you'll get your reward. So you got to suffer the, you know, this now and just see that you don't need to have that burden. That what's available through this is that you can, you can, you, as your manifest life becomes lighter, it becomes more transparent and you thereby see more clearly and effortlessly your own self expressed there. So the, the confusion that leads to all of this pain is, goes away. So this is um, what is available. So we want to understand that there's, a, it's a, it's a, a fine line, I suppose, because, you know, you, the mind will want to go off on some weird hedonistic path that kind of justifies itself by based on what I just said, but it's overlooking something fundamental, which is you first of all have to get clear on what you really want. Blind hedonism is in without awareness of what you really want you're going to be pursuing many things that you think you want that you don't really want and that will be very painful so here is a fine point but it's very important to understand no this inquiry if you do the three steps takes care of the heavy lifting for you you just rely on those steps you keep doing them it will it will show, it will reveal these things. It is producing that change in the nervous system. It's inevitable. It, it simply, it, it works in that regard. Um, wow, a lot of talking. So I'm gonna wrap it up for this formal portion and for the Q&A, for those who would like to, we'll stay on. So let me end this recording.